Hi everybody, welcome to the stream. Welcome back, hope you're having a great day. Um, I'm here, I'm ready to stitch, I'm ready to keep going. Um, there we go. So here's where we're at today. Um, I'm excited because I'm finally ready to start doing some color work. Um, so we're gonna start with the roof. Mm, I'm sure we'll get the roof done, but we're today we're gonna really be doing what's called today the bayou stitch. It's a, cow, a couching, couching, couching stitch, where we're gonna lay down some threads and then uh, sort of couch. Well, it's called couching. Um, lay some other threads on top of them, and uh, I suppose it was done to make it a little bit faster for filling um, it's a really cool effect um, I use it quite a lot in my other work so yeah let's get started so the roof we're going to be using these two colors um, if you're playing along this is Renaissance dyeing of course where I've got all my wool thread um, so the blue is 1610 and this is 1408 that I'm going to be using. Um, I don't, I'm kind of, uh, I, I really waffled trying to figure out which color to use um, in the fortress. It was either going to be this one or one that's not in the official list, like the matter red. Um, but finally I decided now I'm going to go ahead and this one that looks good. And uh, yeah, I think it's going to look great. So, um, as usual, I am counting, counting my lengths to see how much yarn I'm using. It's 
it's always good to know exactly how much material you're using. I don't know if I'm going to keep this or if I'm going to sell it, but whatever happens, at least I'll know exactly how much thread I used. I've already forgotten the number, 
too in plain and practical. Um, yeah. So I'm doing a mashup. Um, and I can open it up and show you. It's just that it's a little bit easier to to a stitch when it's not all folded out. So this is something I've just always wanted to do. Let me take you on a little tour. Ah, oh, did you really? I love it. Um, I just think the Bayou Tapestry is super cool. Oh wow, that is really, really rad. Oh, I'd be really interested in that. So what this is, um, I've taken elements of the Bayou Tapestry to create my own scene. Um, and there's only, to be honest, like three or four elements that I had to completely make up. Um, everything else comes directly from the tapestry. Obviously, this is the fortress, um, but it comes from scenes 15. Um, over here, we have King Arthur and Patsy. Oh man, I bet it does. I, um, I mostly used, well, um, for example, scene 15, which I'm working off of right now for the, the color, um, I blew up and just traced, um, here it is, um, and then for other elements, like for what I did in the border, um, I just used smaller pieces. Um, let me see. And so, I don't know how your Latin is, but we have, um, yeah, I was kind of, here's a deal. Yeah, I, there's something in me that really likes the idea of, of, let me tell you why. So I live in France. I, I, I make uh, embroidery kits for a living. Um, and I sell them at medieval festivals. And so I've been using, um, oh, for sure, yes. All of the thread that I use in my, in my, personal kits that I create are made by a company called Renaissance Dyeing. Um, put a little bit closer, which is a company in the south of the France that makes, uh, uh, they dye naturally their yarn. So this is 100% Merino yarn, um, two ply Merino, and um, it's all done naturally. And Last week, I've had a relationship with them for quite a long, well, I mean, like seven or eight years now. <clears throat> and so I contacted them and said, I'm doing this project. Oh, that's rad. Oh, that's very cool. So you're carding and spinning and weaving and dyeing and everything. That's very, very, very cool. I love that. Um, so I um, talked to Andy, who is the proprietor of Renaissance Dyeing, and I said, I'm doing this project by Tapestry, Monty Python, blah, blah, blah. And um, oh, she said, oh, well, here's a list of threads that we sent to the by that the artist who reconstructed the last panel used 20 years ago and I went oh, 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 oh. so 
knowing that I have the same color palette to play with as the reconstructed panel that's currently on view at the Bayou Museum kind of made me a little bit excited. <laughs> Uh, knowing that I'm using the same threads as what's on display at the moment. So, I mean, I think that's kind of why I'm a little bit excited about not necessarily matching it color for color, because I know some of the colors that she doesn't buy. <laughs> Ugh, yes, I totally, totally hear you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. That medieval bright pink. I know about that. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Or sir. Yes, sir or ma'am. Uh, or whatever. Anyway. Um, so that's why, again, I'm not, you know, trying to stay reconstruction and knitting belts, lots of kits, my hand spins, does my little, oh. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> you mean happy, right? <laughs> that's great. <laughs> Oh, that's very, very cool. Are you affiliated with the SCA or is it, um, is it a little bit different? <laughs> a friend of mine and I tried to start a, um, an SCA when we were in, uh, a chapter when we were in college. And uh, it didn't work out, but I've been going hard for medieval stuff for a minute. <laughs> so yeah, oh yeah, and then the other side, I have um, had to finish up the quote. Oh, that's rad. I never did get to go to Pensick, but I didn't really get into me uh, med stuff until, I mean, like this, this much into it until I moved here. Um, oh yeah, I am not surprised at all. I, I think it's probably better that way. I'm sure it's gotta be the first time it's been canceled. I imagine. Um, but I did look up to see if there was an SCA chapter here. And I know that there's one in, there's one or two in England. There might be one in Paris. I'm not hundred percent sure, but I don't live in Paris and, um, it's just, ugh, it wasn't really worth it to try and chase it down. And, uh, yeah. I'm from East Coast, um, the Carolinas, and there's a big Ren Fair outside of Charlotte. Yeah, for real. Word, word, word. It's the same thing. All the local medieval festivals have been canceled here. Pretty much everybody's agreed that it's just not worth it. Um, we're not getting those kinds of numbers, but... <laughs> But what's cool about having a medieval festival here is that most of the time you're set up next to a medieval castle. <laughs> and that's pretty rad. I mean, sometimes it's just, you know, it's a way for a village to have a festival and, and you know, bring in some money. And there's nothing wrong with that. But the ones that actually have, you know, the backdrop is <laughs> so dang cool. Very, very, very cool. Um, so yeah, um, see, I think we're going the same way. They're very much pushing to open everything back up here. Not in the same, oh, thank you. <laughs> 
Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, it's really, really nice to get some feedback from somebody who's in the community because there's not a whole bunch of us here on Twitch or if they are, they haven't found me yet. And that's cool. Um, with this stuff, um, I actually, um, and if you look, if you look on my channel and see my older videos, yeah, I'm using, um, transfer pen. So I laid out the entire, um, template, uh, with, you know, just it very much use what you have kind of a situation with a four paper and, um, laid out everything, taped it up. And then on the back side, I retraced it with, um, fabric pen. And then I transferred it and destroyed my rug because I wasn't very intelligent and, uh, it should wash out at the end, but hopefully in any case, it'll be all covered up. Um, so yeah, that's actually how I make my kits. So it seemed, um, what I should have done, I realize now. Yeah, we actually, um, I had, there is actually a, um, I worked with a printing company here in Reims. Um, but I found it more economical to just go ahead and do it myself. I, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I'm so I'm still transferring by hand, um, for better or for worse. <laughs> oh yeah, that's an actually a really good idea. I have done a few, um, um, like tattoo themed ones where the border is, um, where the, where the banners are empty. But the medieval one is a good idea. I hadn't thought of that. I've also done, um, I have uh, marginalia ones. So like the, the one I just released is a bunny riding out with a sword and a shield um, riding atop his trusty steed who is a lion. Um, I'm sure you've seen that one, <laughs> but, uh, I love marginalia in a big, big, big way. So, uh, ah. that's a good idea. Thank you. <laughs> One thing that is good is that the medieval community here in France has, has gotten together and created some virtual, um, some virtual online kind of markets so that we can still kind of advertise for free and and uh, show our work to a bigger audience. So that's been helpful as well. But this is me being on Twitch is 100% because um, I don't know when I'm going to be going to another market again and just kind of put out there, hey, I'm here, I make stuff. Hey, medievalists. How you doing? <laughs> go, 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 you know. Works. 
It's so big. I've never done a project this big before also, so that's a little bit intimidating. But this is one of those, you know, when else am I gonna do it? <laughs> hoop, adding a leather thong, and then putting it over an uncut hoop. Make, oh! Basket rims and thong. Drilling a hole in the ends of a cut hoop, adding a leather thong, and then putting it over an uncut hoop. I'm trying to imagine this in my head. So it's round. Because here I've never seen round ones used in reconstruction, always the frame type. I'm not saying that's wrong at all. I'm just saying I've never seen it. Mm. But that makes perfect sense. Um, using, you know, baskets are going to fall apart eventually and you want to keep using it. I am all washed out. Cool. Oh, that's interesting. to look at that because if there's one thing we've got around here it's plenty of baskets <laughs> that's a really great idea I usually use a rectangle, a rectangular frame. Um, but this is just too big. <laughs> Is there a particular um, time period that you participate in for your, for example, for your, in, now remind, remind me because here when you're, it's, you're usually when you're a reconstructor, you're part of a company and the company stays, um, consistent in time period and place um, I mean obviously people come and go so I mean it's okay if somebody wants to um, role play a different area but typically the time period stays the same in a company if I remember correctly when you're an SCA you choose personally what time period you want to do is there a particular time period that you prefer that you like to reconstruct Oof. I mean, yeah, we see all that in the, the um, what's popular right now is Vikings. 
So we do have some Viking companies that are pretty popular, but there are, what's good is that every festival kind of, I mean, for the public, it's you come with whatever, you, you dress up as whatever, we get steampunk, we get everything. It's giving me, um, I'm going to go ahead and allow it. They're afraid that you're doxing yourself. It's cool. <laughs> oh, it was for white trash. We're not allowed to say that. Um... There was one festival I went to that was a whole group of people um, that were like that, that were white trash. Um, but they were like medieval white trash. It was actually kind of funny. And they're all dirty and probably drunk. <laughs> I mean, playing drunk. I don't think they were really drunk. We get enough of that. <laughs> but yeah, we get a little bit of everything. Um... For the, for the public. I mean, so no one's going to get denied because they're wearing, you know, steampunk or whatever. But um, some organizers mm, preach. Um, some organizers are really sticklers for... Um, what you're allowed to have in your booth and what you're allowed to sell and it can't be made in China and it has to be um, uh, artisanal and some of them don't care and they're just there to make a quick buck and uh, and that's fine. I don't care as long as I know which one I'm going to and I'm ready in advance. It's fine, but... Um, Right, but that's okay. Um, yeah, and that's the truth. Everybody thinks they were Princess Hootie Hoo. And... There's a really good medieval blog in... Is it French or English? I don't remember. Yeah, you're doing it right. In France, um, in the community, there's um, everybody says when they're, criti they're critiquing somebody, if they're not, if they're wearing velvet or if they're wearing a cost, you know, like a real, you know, um, polyester costume or whatever, uh, they say it's not historic, but in French, they shorten it. So it's pas histo. So everything is pas histo. In, in France when you're not wearing what you're supposed to be wearing or you're wearing jeans or you're wearing you know regular shoes they say you're paisto if you're paisto you, you can't be a merchant you have to be you have to make an effort you have to wear the clothes because straight up there are merchants that will throw just like a tabac over them their jeans their whatever and they just throw like a tabar over them and they're done. They're like, oh, I'm a costume. It's like, come on, man. I know you're just selling made in China crap, but make an effort. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. Nice. Now, I do admit, I do tend to dress up a little bit more because embroidery is typically a little bit more higher class. But at the same time, if I was higher class embroidery, I wouldn't be selling it in the street. So, nah. Oh, God, we have all that. Yes. Man, a lot of that. It, here, it's like... It's usually sexy fairies. Um, we do get our share of 
most of the musicians have dancing girls and the dancing girls you, you you know yeah i have the same problem with glasses especially when i'm working um i wanted to go to contacts but because of the nature of my work when i talked to my uh optometrist about changing the contacts they were like that's really not a good idea for you so too bad for me um oh god they're terrible <laughs> It's just, come on, you guys, make a little effort. We don't all have to be, you don't have to be sexy, whatever. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Like, I don't want to... I don't know. Festival thing, it's not a reconstruction for the people that are visiting. It is from us, but it's not all it's not for the public, and you just have to kind of go, oh, they're playing, you know, they're they're participating and they're dressing up, and that's great. They're making an effort with what they have, and that's cool. I was doing one festival, I was stitching, and um, it was really, really hot. And I was wearing, uh, I think it was linen, I didn't have my silk one yet. And so I had this really long, I was doing the, um, the wrapped head style. Not a turban, but you know what I mean? Where it's kind of wrapped in the back. And this guy, and it was the kind of camp where people could walk all over it's six weekends oh yeah it's really long yeah no 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 i totally totally understand we wear sandals in the summer because it's it gets so hot here too we wear sandals too bad you know you know when it's i when it's you know dangerously hot <laughs> no one's ex i mean like we the guys still do full armor and they and they still do the battle and everything. Yeah, I think that's a really good idea. I have a pair of boots. Um, they're short boots, but um, because I have foot problems, I actually, I got them a size bigger and I put um, su supportive um, insoles in them. <laughs> Because I couldn't wear them otherwise, but, you know, in the winter, you need to have something good. Um, I forget what I was blabbing about. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I'm wearing my, my linen head wrap. My hair's totally covered. It was really hot. Oh, my God. Yes been there done that yeah it's not fun when it's super hot like that it's a drag I have actually done that and it's not fun Oh man, there's a couple of um, Christmas markets here that are medieval and outside and I've never done them because I'm a fragile little flower, <laughs> but um, I have friends that do them and whoo, they get a little oof. <laughs> Um, so anyway, so I'm, so I'm stitching. It's summer. I'm wearing this thing on my head. And, um, it was the kind of camp where visitors could walk around and I don't think they were really supposed to, but they were. And, you know, often people want to see what I'm stitching and that's fine. But this older man comes up to me and he's like, is it, 
are you religious? And I said, what? I beg your pardon? And he said, is that why you're covered your hair? Is it religious? And I said, this is the medieval era. Everybody should have their heads covered, men and women and children, everybody. Of course, not everybody was, but I mean, that was the thing. It's like, eh, I'm a married woman. My head is covered. And he, he I think he thought I was Muslim because he couldn't understand why I had all this stuff on my head. It was very weird. But that doesn't happen very, very often. Oh, yes. Wool blankets in the winter. Yes. Oh, that's really cool. Oh, oh, I just got... Oh, that's really, really sweet to see everybody wrapped up in your blankets. That's very cool. Yeah. Even if you just have a linen head covering, you know, it's it's not it's not correct if you don't have your head covered. God's gonna get you. <laughs> I do think I ended up taking it off though, because you know, after that, and it was so hot, I was like, man, what's the point? I don't need to get heat stroke. <laughs> If I'm the only one wearing a head covering, this is ridiculous. Although I say that, I think I was the only woman that was married that day. So maybe. Maybe it would have been okay. But. Yeah, when the guys are wearing full armor and they're out walking around and God going through the parade. Ugh, what are y'all doing? You don't have to get heat stroke. It's not cool. being a big old chatty Kathy today. I'm not getting any uh, stitching done, but it's just fine. That's why I'm here. Oh, I'm so glad that you came in. This is dark turquoise. You know, I think I'm going to use my other color after all. I think I just like it better and, and too bad. Save this for something else. I'm uh, measuring my thread, so we're 
irk. I have an idea how much I'm gonna use. I, I don't know. I, ugh. I have friends telling me I should do this as a kit, and I'm like, you're crazy. This thing is too big. <laughs> this is a little bit too big. It'll be too expensive. Um, but I am. I may sell it if I don't keep it. So, you know, good to know how much I'm using. I don't know yet. I haven't got that far. Are you working on any kind of crafty projects these days? Thirty-eight poplar lidded boxes. Wow. Let's start on twenty-three hardwood ones that are cut out for final fitting. A big box full of little pieces that would come pins, needles, and nail binding tools. Oh scraps from one thing get made into products for other things. Preach. <laughs> wow. Do love a wooden box. I do hate the being an artist has turned me into a hoarder. <laughs> I never want to throw anything away. It could be useful. You never know. My husband is not a fan <laughs> of the hoarding. Anyway.
<laughs> yeah. But it was on sale. <laughs> Three rooms of fabrics. Oh my god. $220. Wow. God. The back of one room was a. Oh, jeez. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, what luck. Wow, that's amazing. That would absolutely floor me. <laughs> A full size kiln for $65. <laughs> At an auction to make embellishments for my boxes, tiles and medallions and simple things. That's amazing. That's fantastic. Nothing cool like that ever happens to me. <laughs> That's not true. I mean, I... The problem right now is that I just don't have space for everything. Maybe one day. Right now, half the living room is my workshop. Everything is all about 16 inches or less. Yeah, that's good. Sometimes even eight inches, so I can buy drops and damage lumber seconds for 50. Oh yeah, that's amazing, yeah. Mm-hmm. For sure. Our, um, what do you call it? Our, it's not, obviously it's not Goodwill, but it's like our French version of Goodwill has been absolutely amazing in getting kitted out. <laughs> Four years now Mills call me up and say hey we have some stuff left over sweet oh yeah mm -hmm. oh cedar I love cedar <laughs> that's amazing I say that a lot, don't I? Ooh. I'm a little repetitive, but it is amazing. <laughs> My parents had a cedar closet. Ugh, memories.
Yeah, so I'm streaming in my son's room. <laughs> sure! I'd be happy to see it. P&P Woods. Go check them out. I'm always happy to, um... <laughs> Ooh, I might drool on the Lucids. And just so you know, I do um, post my streams on YouTube. So if you're on YouTube and you're a medievist, <gasps> I can't talk anymore. If you're into medieval stuff, <laughs> go check out her website and drool. You can check out my website too, Sweet of the Feel, which means follow the thread. Follow the thread. Can't talk in French. And I do ship worldwide. This is worldwide.
If you had a small kit that rendered a 10 by 10 finished product, they could sew it to something, make it more useful in a daily way, like sew it. Now, that's exactly what I do. Um, most of my kits are, um, if you, I, I don't know if you've gone over and looked on the website, most of them come on 30 by 30, 30 by 30 um, centimeter uh, fabric. And they all fit on like the, mo the vast majority of them fit on a regular eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. Um, so they won't be any bigger than that. Uh, sometimes they're even smaller than that and half the size. So yeah, they're definitely good for um, cutting out, putting them on bags and pillows and, and blankets and all that good stuff. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of stuff. I, I do a lot of series. <laughs> We're not backwards. We're just different. <laughs> um, yeah, 30, 30, the, 30 equals 12 inches. 12 centimeters equals a foot. So, yeah, yes. Um, so, some of my... I, I tend to do series, not always, but I do have some series going all the time. Um, my biggest series is the alphabet. I'm doing illuminated letters um, with a similar background for everything. Oh yeah, I see what you're saying. That's a really good idea. Um, eh, not bad, not bad. I've been meaning to actually go to the thrift shop and buy a couple of denim jackets either to embellish and sell or to put my to put my kits on I mean my my stuff and to photograph them and then sell them but <laughs> yeah it's not a bad idea so my I have the Ill illuminated letters I'm up to J um, they take a really long time. <laughs> I'm doing, what's my other series? Oh, what an amazing idea. P and P. That's another thing I've been thinking about doing is um, selling just the templates individually. Um, because um, that way it's a lot. Oh, very good. Oh, that's such a cool idea. Because, yeah, that's, I know that that is something that a lot of embroidery artists do, um, sell just the templates. Um, I need to look into that. For somebody that just wants to use whatever they have on hand and they don't want to have it shipped from Europe. Because sometimes you're looking for projects and you want to start it now. <laughs> There's that, too. Thank you, by the way. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your very helpful um, advice. I really appreciate it. This is something that um, I really struggled with. Um, Cause I um, very much don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> as far as the, you know, I've often 
joked and said, if I could just sit in my house and make embroidery and the embroidery disappears and then um, money magically appears in my bank account, I would be so happy. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. Um, I have a really difficult time promoting myself and talking about myself. So um, this is starting starting this this stream has been one way not only to just kind of talk to people and because this is what literally what I would be doing anyway if I wasn't doing this in front of a camera I would be doing this anyway um so it was a way for me to socialize but um also because uh yeah figuring out how to put myself out there has been really really hard um, I find it really difficult to talk about myself. Um, so it's been a challenge. Yeah, I thought about that too. That could be helpful eventually to, um, uh, the giveaways, I mean, um, as a way to try and up my... Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, it's funny. When I'm writing copy for the website, it's fine. Even this situation is okay because um, you're there and I'm here and I can't see you but when I'm I'm a wreck when I do um when I'm at my medieval markets and I'm selling and people are talking and I'm like oh, bar, 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 bar. I just I get so stressed out and nervous plus the fact that it's in French obviously um French not being my first language so there's that extra stress of speaking a different language um, and trying to promote myself and talk about my work. <laughs> well, I mean, I've been here for 15 years. So, I mean, part of it is being a foreigner in France. A lot of it is social anxiety. <laughs> Where I just have to, ironically, I have social anxiety and a degree in musical theater. So, <laughs> so I just, in those situations where it's really, really hard, I just, I become the performer and I perform instead of... <laughs> So yeah, I kind of step outside of myself so I can, so I can get the job done, you know, and then, ugh. I'm not angry about the kilt situation. happening oh weird hmm. 
Yeah, I like that as well. Yeah, I've actually, um, I've left the company I was a part of just because I didn't have time for it. Um, <gasps> small pipes, that's great. I love them. <laughs> That's very cool. I am a musician and I always did want to, um, I was seriously considering buying a psaltery um, before I ended up leaving the company. Not for any bad reason, just because I didn't have time and the company was always doing, um, doing festivals at different places, so. Bellows Blown, is that? Oh, the, yeah, 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 I know what you're talking about. Yeah, and I think you, you do it under your arm, is that right? I think I've seen those played. I'm a singer, so I always wanted an instrument that I could sing and, and play at the same time. A little nine note handmade one. Oh yeah, I know what you're talking about. Those are lovely. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I forgot what I was gonna say. It's not bad actually. Um, yeah, so I was thinking sultry or Uh, Hurdy Gurdy is kind of prohibitively expensive. Oh, yeah, okay. I've never, um, let me think. We, it's weird. We don't really see psalteries very often at the, anyway, at the, the ones that I go to here in France. Um, I do know somebody in Belgium who plays harp. And so she'll she'll break out her harp in the middle of a company and plays beautifully. Yeah. I do love a psaltery. Mm. Well, I think she was, she's a harpist who got into, yes, much easier to carry. <laughs> she's a harpist that got into medieval re uh, reconstitution and not, you know, a medievist who, you know, wants to do medieval. So it wasn't that kind of situation, but still. I mean, my son plays guitar and he wanted to bring his guitar and we were like, dude, you can't, <laughs> sorry. He was only like nine or nine or 10 at the time. So that was hard. All the instruments that he plays aren't really 
compatible with the medieval stuff, unfortunately. I'm not quite sure what a concertina is. I mean, I would probably, uh, thank you for the follow. Okay, thank you so much for hanging out. I really, really appreciate it. I'm here Monday through Friday at three o'clock my time. So, um, come back and have a coffee with me tomorrow if you can. Okay? Have a good one.
How's it going?
hate when I do that. Mm.
looks like this is going to be our last thread for today. I didn't get quite as far as I would have liked. It's okay. Certainly not in any rush, that's for sure. And let's face it, I was a little chatty today. Nothing wrong with that, right? Instead of going ahead and finishing up this thread, I'm just going to leave it off for tomorrow. Pick up right there. If I can get in the corner. There I am. Okay. Well, that's starting to look like something. I'm happy about it. Very happy indeed. Um... It was really nice to chat today. Um, with, oh, I forgot her name. Plain and, Plain, I'll find it. I'm gonna find it. I'm not going to find it. Plain and practical. That's right. Plain and practical. And thanks again for the follow. I appreciate it. Um, just a reminder that I'm here Monday through Friday. Uh, 3 p.m. Paris time. 9 a.m. Eastern, uh, Eastern Standard. Blah, 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 blah. Um... Happy to answer questions or just chat about everything and nothing. That's how, that's good for me too. Um, and if you're watching this on YouTube, thank you so much for watching just to the end. <laughs> um, please do leave a like um, and a subscribe would be sweet. Appreciate it. Um, I won't always be working on this. I'll be working on some other projects as well, but for now I'm stuck in. I'm really enjoying it. It's really exciting to see it come alive. Uh, I like it very much. So we'll be continuing on with Bayou Tapestry and uh, Monty Python mashup tomorrow. Thank you so much for coming and have a great day. Bye. Bye, 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 bye. Have a good one. Mm-hmm. <laughs>